Okay, so um, here's an example of um, the tension between system one and two. So here's a, a, a problem that, it's a famous problem that's been given to hundreds and hundreds of students. Um, it's called the bat and ball problem. So here it is, a bat and a ball cost $1.10. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? So um, take a second and think about this problem. How many of you said that the ball costs 10 cents? Most people, 80% um, I believe of Harvard students who are giving this, given this problem say, say that the ball costs 10 cents. But that is the intuitive system one and, oh, I'm supposed to give you a hint. Okay, here's a hint. Um, if the ball costs 10 cents and the bat costs $1 more than the ball, what is the total cost of the bat and ball? So let's go back. So um, most people t say 10 cents. That's the intuitive answer. That's the answer that leaps to mind, um, 10 cents. But if you, um, and then if, so that's natural. But then um, if you call on system two, to come in and check your work, system two would say, huh, okay, let's see. If the ball costs 10 cents and the uh, bat costs $1 more than the ball, then the bat would cost $1.10, right? So if the bat cost, if the ball costs 10 cents, the bat costs a dollar more, uh, the bat would cost $1.10, and then the total, the bat and ball, would cost $1.20, but it says here in the problem that the bat and ball costs $1.10. So the ball can't cost, the ball can't cost 10 cents, it has to cost five cents. So the bat can cost one more dollar than the ball, the bat would be a dollar five, the bat, the ball would be five cents, so a dollar five plus five cents, a dollar five cents plus five cents would equal a dollar 10. If the ball costs 10 cents, there's your hint. Okay, the total is a dollar 20, so that can't be right. The ball must cost five cents. All right. So the intuitive answer, the answer that comes to almost everybody's mind is 10 cents, and that is something that we can't help. Um, I'd be curious to know if any of you, what popped to mind wasn't 10 cents, but that pops to people's mind. And then you need to call on system two, the, the frontal cortex, to check your work. Here's another problem. In a lake, there's a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long would it take for the patch to cover half the lake? Um, I think, okay, I think the intuitive answer that most people say is, is 24. So you think, well, half of 48 is 24. Uh, the intuitive answer must be 24. Um, and that's the answer that leaps to mind. But actually, where's my, okay, the patch doubles in size every day. So on, um, Day 47, it's half. It doubles in size. The very next day on day 48, it would cover the whole lake. So half to whole uh, takes one day from 47 to 48. And there's a, um, an exponential growth factor to consider here. So again, the um, intuitive answer, 24, um, the, your intuition leads you astray. The quick answer leads you astray in these sorts of contexts. Doesn't lead you, lead you astray here. So intuitive system one, right, gives you the right answer here. Uh, quick, get away. Gives you the right answer here. Again, quick, get away. Disgusting, gross. Um, if this happened, uh, you don't have to uh, get effortful um, time-consuming system two to figure out that you need to take a big step back and avoid getting this whatever that goop is on you. Um, but when it comes to um, math problems, your system one isn't very good. You need to um, call on your system two. Okay, system two is lazy and will let system two do all the work if it can. So if you um, said the intuitive answer, so that would it would have been 10 cents, um, 100 minutes, and 24 days, um, and you didn't call on system um, two to do a little extra work, then you are like almost everybody. Um, 
all of other humans, uh, you'll uh, rely on System 1 as much as you can, and you won't let System 2, you won't use System 2 uh, to do your critical thinking. So this class is all about when to call on System 2, uh, when we need it to help us think critically. So 50% of students at Ivy League schools got this problem wrong. So obviously Ivy League students, uh, well, most students at Ivy League schools are pretty intelligent and um, they still get the problem wrong. And they're pretty easy problems if you take a moment and use system two to work through the problem. So it's more a test of laziness than intelligence. So you can be a good critical thinker. That's why wisdom and intelligence are two separate factors. Um, and people who are good critical thinkers tend to be wise. So system two is lazy. So if system one comes up with a fast intuitive answer, um, it will often okay it and not work any further. So system two will be like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, that's enough. I don't want to think anymore. And you don't do any further work. So, I mean, so think of all the times that um, you've gotten things wrong or messed things up because system two just checked up off on things without thinking them through. Okay. So being a good critical thinker requires knowing when to use your system two to check up on system one. So this is what we'll be studying in this class. We'll be studying um, certain predictable biases that happen time and time again, and you will know. Um, so for example, the planning fallacy, which we'll be talking about next time, um, when you're making plans for the future. This is a time when um, system two is needed uh, to, to not just check off on system. So we're going to be studying in this class times when your intuitive system one leads you astray and you will learn when to use system two to check up on system one. So let's talk about when system one operates well. Uh, I talked before about, you know, when you're in, you're walking in the forest and there's a snake on the ground, or in, I guess in this case, we're in Nevada, when you're um, in red rocks and you are rattling um, near your feet. Uh, you don't have to stop and think, what does rattling mean? What should I do if there's a, a snake? Uh, your system one knows right away uh, to get out of danger. So um, system one operates really well when you're doing something you're good at, like knitting, driving a car, riding a bike, swimming, playing chess, if you know how to play chess. If you don't know how to play chess, system one doesn't operate well at all. Uh, reading words in your native language if you are literate. So um, if you know how to knit, if you know how to drive a car, if you're a proficient knitter, I should say, you're a proficient car driver, if you're proficient at riding a bike, swimming and playing chess, you don't have to think about it. You know intuitively it's easy doing these things. Um, you don't have to remember when to apply the brakes. You don't um, have to remember where the turn signal is. Your hand just goes up and hits the turn signal. Um, or system one operates really well when doing things that all humans are good at. All humans that are uh, neurotypically developing, uh, developed humans. So um, interpreting facial expressions, interpreting tone of voice, and recognizing danger to your life. So um, if your brain has developed normally, then you'll be good at these things. So some people, like autistic people, um, need to use system two to interpret facial expressions. Uh, they don't know right away what a smiley face means. Um, or they can't uh, tell the difference between a grimace of pain and a smile of happiness. Um, they aren't good at interpreting sarcasm in the tone of voice um, because um, something happened in the development of the brain. So system one is really good at these things um, if you're a typically developing person. When does system one operate poorly? Well, system one does not do well um, in any sort of complicated math problems. It doesn't do well when you're trying to multitask. Um, so multitasking uh, calls upon um, system two. When you're learning any sort of new skill, so you're learning to knit, learning to drive, learning a new language, you need to call on system two. Um, when you're trying to integrate two fields of knowledge, so you're trying to figure out what um, uh, a certain philosopher would say about a certain mathematician. Um, and then when thinking about odds or statistics, so humans are really bad about um, uh, their intuitions about odds and statistics 
are uh, usually wrong. And this is what um, keeps Las Vegas going. So um, why do people keep coming back to the gambling tables? Well, um, we're pretty bad. Uh, we're pretty bad um, with odds and statistics. So. Okay, when does System 2 operate well? Well, um, System 2 operates well whenever we're dealing with higher levels of thinking. So whatever those are. Measuring, measuring, using a tape measure to measure wood before you saw it. Adding and multiplying large numbers. Remembering phone numbers. Memorizing names. Uh, deciding between two options in the store. So suppose you're at the store and you're trying to decide um, which uh, box of cereal is the better value. Um, that's going to be system two working. Unless you're just picking based on um, which box uh, design you like better. That's system one. That's what advertisers are appealing to. Um, your unconscious attraction to the packaging is a system one um, operation. If you take a step back, look at the number of ounces in the package, and compare um, the price per ounce, and, and make yourself disregard um, the pretty gold letters, then um, that's system two at work. And then learning new skills. So uh, for people who are not good at dancing, learning how to dance is a system two activity. Um, this is why I hate any sort of exercise classes that involve dancing. It's twice as difficult. Uh, there's the working out and the remembering the dance steps. So uh, when does system two operate poorly? So system two, so I, I might ask you, well, you know, why do we even need system one? Why don't we always use system two? So think a second about what it would be like not to have system two, but um, I'm sorry, not to have system one, but to use system two all the time. And uh, it would be awful. So um, things we take for granted, like walking, um, you'd have to think about how to walk. You'd have to think about how to open a door. You'd have to think about um, how to get to work from your home. Um, it would be very stressful. So if anyone's ever lived in a foreign country, um, you're using system two to get through your daily life. Um, a country that's foreign to you, not foreign to the US. So if you've uh, studied abroad and you're um, native to the United States and you're in China, um, Every, so many things that you did in Las Vegas using system one, you're using system two to do. So to understand what people are saying, to figure out how the bathrooms work, to figure out how the telephone systems work, how to get around the city, how to use the subway, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're using system two all the time. It is draining and stressful if you've ever um, traveled and lived abroad. So um, life would be, the bottom line is life would be really exhausting if we did not have system one. So we learned that system one is an automatic system that developed to keep humans alive. So system one um, is effective in our evolutionary past. Um, it keeps us um, from being killed by snakes, crushed by boulders, from falling off cliffs. System one is quick, and because of this, it's quick, intuitive, and effortless. But it also, but it often jumps to the wrong conclusions. Uh, math problems like the bat and ball problem and jumps to the wrong conclusions about um, decisions, um, about which cereal to buy when um, they, system one will pick the prettier uh, marketing, um, the prettier box, the nicer packaging. Um, system two is associated with your frontal cortex. It's um, uh, system one calls on system two when it's stuck. System two is slow, effortful, and energy draining, and because of that, it's lazy. So um, if you're especially, we'll talk a little bit about ego depletion, but if you've already had a really hard day, if it's been a, a long day, and then someone asks you to do a math problem, um, you may not have the energy to put into that. If you go grocery shopping um, when you're really tired, so suppose you've had a draining physical workout, if you've had a stressful day, you'll be more likely, or hungry, you'll be more likely to be drawn in by um, the nice packaging um, and um, won't spend as much time assessing value that takes system two. Critical thinking is about using system two to check up on system one. 
good critical thinking is more um, is less about intelligence and more about not being lazy. Okay, so that concludes our lecture.